All right, so let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Vyond at this hour, where an independent probe has now concluded that both China and the World Health Organization could have acted faster during the initial days to stem the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. The probe has further said that the WHO and China could have actually acted faster at the instance when COVID-19 had first surfaced. They even went on to state that there was a largely a hidden epidemic that contributed to the global spread of the COVID-19 infection. And this was mentioned in a report by the Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response. In its report, the panel has said that the public health measures could have actually been applied more forcefully in China, especially during the months of December and January. It has also criticized the WHO for dragging its feet at the beginning of the crisis in declaring the COVID-19 infection as a pandemic. It has said, and I quote, the chronology of the early phase of the outbreak suggests that there was potential for early signs to have been acted on more rapidly. And this comes as the coronavirus pandemic has claimed the lives of over 2 million people across the world. Both China and the WHO have earlier been slammed for their slow pandemic response. The report also comes that the WHO team is currently in China investigating into the origins of the pandemic. All right, now to give us more insights into this, we're joined in by virologist Dr. Julian Tang, who's joining us live from Leicester in the United Kingdom. Now, Dr. Tang, thank you very much indeed for joining us on this broadcast on Vyond. And let me begin by asking you this. This is a pretty damning report that states that both China and the WHO could have actually done much more in the beginning days of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic that could have, if not prevented, at least slowed down the spread of the COVID-19 infection to the rest of the world? Yeah, so a lot of us working in this field believe that at least the WHO could have responded quicker to declare a fake public health emergency of international concern and then a pandemic because that would motivate other, other countries, uh, governmental machineries to actually then use public health quickly and uh, aggressively. Um, I think the, the response from China is actually not that similar from the rest of the countries worldwide. I mean, the UK, Europe and USA, North America were actually quite slow to respond even after the WHO declared the pandemic. But I think the WHO is the key coordinator of all these public health responses globally. And if they declared a fake and then a pandemic much earlier, they could, have, they could have saved several weeks of spread of the virus coming from China at that point. Absolutely indeed. Now, is there a problem in, in the manner in which the WHO went about, you know, giving out directions and guidelines as soon as infections like this were being reported? Because we know for a fact that in January, China, in fact, imposed its lockdowns, but the WHO would not come out with the guidelines that were needed at that point of time and actually dragged its feet in declaring COVID-19 to be a pandemic. Could it have done something differently here? Yeah, so that's the exact point that a lot of us are concerned about, because if they declared the fake and the pandemic earlier and quicker, then other countries could have enacted their public health measures uh, similar to China um, to reduce the spread of the virus. What they were actually waiting for was a, they said that they were waiting for a confirmed person-to-person uh, -person transmission outside of China, which was already happening in China. And there's no reason why the virus would uh, behave any differently outside of China versus in China. So that delay between the fake and the declaration of the pandemic of waiting for person-to-person -person spread uh, evidence of that outside China seemed very bizarre to a lot of us. And I think that delay uh, may have been driven by something else, but perhaps more political or a reluctance to disrupt uh, travel or, or other parts of the economy globally. So a lot of us are concerned about that particular stage that you mentioned. Absolutely. Now, going forward, because, you know, in this case, it does quite clearly appear that WHO was, was relying on information that was being put out by the Chinese officials. And now the Chinese officials, of course, are themselves in a bit of a dock because they are accused of actually trying to push things under the carpet and were not giving out information of this new infection that was being reported, some say, but as early as December 2019. So can the WHO now tweak some of its rules and not necessarily rely on the officials of a given particular country in going about and giving guidelines whenever there is a new infection that is reported? 
Yes, yeah, so I think the WHO has a problem in the sense that it has to consider political impact versus health impact. And I think this these priorities might be mixed up or competing a lot of the time. And I certainly have talked to other people who have been investigating this, this type of story uh, where the, 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 the delay of WHO declaring a pandemic or a fake uh, in response to the Wuhan outbreak may have been driven by these other political considerations. And I think that this is probably one of the key issues that WHO has to address internally to separate that kind of political uh, aspect of its role from its health care uh, responsibilities. I think that's the, that's the crucial element. I mean, it, whether it's China or US or UK uh, that might be having an outbreak uh, at that time, um, I think their reluctance to declare a fake in a pandemic may be driven by more global political considerations and much less uh, from a healthcare point of view. Even though they will say it's always driven by the healthcare point of view, um, we know that in, in, in the past 12 months, um, the political angle has been quite important to them. Absolutely indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Julian Tang, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.